Let's, let's go to it with uh, Warren Boland, John Peart and Arthur Beetson. Last week, the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs slipped from the top of the table with a loss to St George. Canberra too went down when the resurgent Eels caused an upset. Today, both teams need to lift their game. Canberra have only three wins out of six starts, and a loss here, with the rep games ahead, will make the road to the semis a perilous one. The Bulldogs are once again being called the entertainers. This year, they're pulling record crowds with their open style of fast-moving football. The good news for Canterbury today is the return from suspension of star setter Jared McCracken. But the match-up to watch is at 5-8. Can Laurie Daly be at his best for the 480 minutes after last night's clash? And can the warrior Terry Lamb stay out of the blood bin? And in the battle of the halves, can an injury-slowed Ricky Stewart match City Origins' Craig Polamounta? The sparks should fly as two spectacular teams meet in the only game you'll see live on television this weekend. From Bruce Stadium in the nation's capital, the Canberra Raiders versus the Canterbury Bulldogs. And a great atmosphere building up. Hello, everyone. Glad you could join us. And also with me once again this week is the winning Cronulla coach, Arthur Beetson, back with us. I haven't been able to get the smile off the face all <laughs> week, well. Well, this game today, uh, both teams have pretty good defensive records, but in attack, Canterbury have been more successful. They've put points on the board, Canberra haven't. That's right. Well, Canberra have played a compressed defensive pattern. They almost invite you to go down the outside lanes. Canterbury won't disappoint them. They'll try to beat them on the outside. Also, look to Polamounter and Lamb to use the kick in behind, hoping to capitalise on the Brett Dallas speed machine. Canterbury are similar. They have a similar defensive pattern. They have a compressed def pa defensive pattern. When they get into trouble, they do come in and exposing their wing. Look to Daly and Meninga to use the cutout passes, trying to pick up Naduka and Hoppy on the outside. Uh, this will be a tough defensive game today, uh, but for mine, the key could be whether Daly or Polamata back up well from the last night's representative matches. Well, we've talked about the battle of the halves and five-eighths. We also have... The Australian centre, Mal Meninga, up against probably the New Zealand centre, Jared McCracken. So some great matchups here today. And here come the Raiders. Let out by Big Mal. Important day for them. Paul Osman in the front row alongside Steve Walters. At fullback, it's Gary Belcher. Noah Nadruku on one wing. Mal Meninga partners David Boyle in the centre with Brett Mullins dropped to reserve grade. Sean Hoppy on the other wing. Laurie Daly is the 5'8". Ricky Stewart at halfback. Jason Croker lock forward, Quentin Pongia and David Ferner in the second row. Darren Fritz comes into the front row for John Lomax, who's out injured. Steve Walters, the hooker, and Paul Osborne, the other front rower. Ricky Stewart was picked to represent country during the week, but withdrew with a groin strain, but he's playing today. The Bulldogs have won all but last week's game so far this season. So they have been in fine form. Only beaten narrowly by a very strong St George side last week. Laurie Daly, just making his way onto the field, must have just got back from Sydney. <laughs> Luke Goodwin at fullback, Brett Dallas on one wing, Darren Smith and Jared McCracken the centre pair, Jason Williams the other winger, Terry Lamb the 5 8 and captain, Craig Polamounter at halfback, Jim Dimmock at lock forward, Jason Smith and Simon Gillies in the second row, Martin Bella, Jim Sedaris and Dean Pay, the front rowers. I just see Darren Setter out in the field, so maybe he's come in as a last-minute replacement for someone. Yep, looking out there, number 40 is on the field, Darren Setter for Canterbury, and let's go down to Johnny Peard. G'day, Warren. Great day here in Canberra. Nice and warm today for a change, the nation's capital. But it uh, should be an interesting game today. I think the highlight will be the individual clashes, and that'll be all over the paddock. Should be a beaut game. And the referee today is Bill Harrigan in the battle of referees looking towards the representative games bill harrigan has controlled many of them but there's a few good referees putting pressure on him at the moment warren simon gillies will start on the bench so it's simon gillies thanks john simon gillies on the bench that's the shuffle with darren center out there and laurie daly goes into dummy half and bursts out of there immediately 
four players from Canterbury played in last night's City Country Clash. Luke Goodwin, Craig Polamata, Jim Dimmock and Simon Gillies. Maybe Gillies is feeling the effects worst of the lot. And for Canberra, playing last night, Laurie Daly and David Ferner. Brett Mullins also played, but he played half a game in reserve grade for Canberra today, having been dropped for disciplinary reasons. Turned up later training last Sunday. Well, Alsburn obviously cutting in, taking the pass from somebody else who was expecting it on the last tackle, and they're pulled down just short of the halfway line. It's a handover, and Dallas comes away with it. Well, obviously, from some of the overcalls there, that Osborne had come into the play when he wasn't expected. Our Polamata. And already uh, we can see the very compressed defensive pattern of the green machine, the Raiders. Yeah, but I think what they do allow you, after they do allow you to play football, and that could be dangerous because sometimes you can get around them like this. They're going wide now. Lamb shows it inside, goes out to Williams. He turns it back inside to Goodwin. A the tackle there. They slide well, John. They slide well, but uh, if they went up quicker, it'd be more effective. Here's Jason Williams in from the wing, ridden to ground. It wouldn't surprise me to see the Muse that got cross kick John to Dallas's wing. Yeah, he's got some toe, hasn't he? Sedaris puts it up on the last. Waiting is Gary Belcher, surrounded by chasers. And of course, Jim Sedaris coming into the Canterbury lineup with Geordie Peach out for the season with a severe knee injury. Although there was a high tackle by Terry Lamb on Hoppy. This is uh, in contrast to last week's start by Canberra. Although they surrendered a ball uh, on a turnover. They're just knocking the ball forward now. And I think Ricky Stewart will get this kick away. There's big Darren Fritz. And we have a look at the for and against this season. You can see what I was talking about a moment ago. Pretty good defensive record by both teams. They've only conceded 60-odd points through six games, so 10 per match. But in attack, allowing for the fact that both teams won one game by 40 points, Canterbury have the better attacking record. I think that's also an indication that Canberra are a much more programmed side these days. They virtually do just hit it up for a couple and then look to the backs, but in their own territory, they're prepared as we see Canterbury tried to skirt down the outside. And it's McCracken up towards halfway. Ricky Stewart trying to get hold of him, grapples him to ground. Good attack from Canterbury from their own 20 metre, hitting the blind. Lamb found his wingers. Now, up the middle they go with Jason Smith. Slips it away. Lamb looks wide. Darren Smith reaching, can't hang on to it. And that was a chance. The pass from Lamb just floating away from Darren Smith's hands. We see the cutout pass by Terry Lamb. There was a little bit of a problem there for Canberra because they only had Mal Meninga and the Drucker out there on a three-on-two situation. Jason Smith created that. Nice little pop-back pass when held in the tackle. In the last six games, over the last couple of years between these two teams, Canberra have won five of the clashes. That's an who comes in from the scrum. Beautiful step by Nadruka, beating Terry Lamb, Lamb pointlessly. Now Gary Belcher, driven back. Good, strong defence by Darren Smith. He'll be looking for a Queensland state of origin jersey, Smith. Outs with Croker. Osborne thunders over the halfway. Met by some good defence, though. Dean Pay in there with Sedaris. They swing it wide now on the last. The Daly's kick is charged down by Lamb. Belcher back there and six more tackles. Belcher can't get away from the tackle of Darren Centre. McCracken coming in very hard at the top. Yeah, I felt that one, Arthur. Short pass from Ricky Stewart. Canterbury moving up very quickly. Penalty going against the Canterbury playing. Darren Setter stealing the play, ball in the play of the ball. He's virtually scooping at the ball. Interesting to see there, Ricky Stewart just dishing off the short pass. Now, he was ruled out by the country medical officer during the week because of a groin strain. He is available to play today. Tim Sheens, over the last few weeks, has claimed that Ricky Stewart is fully fit, but every week we see him apparently carrying a groin strain. So, And last week he did not run a great deal, so what will he do today? Occasionally he does take off, and there's obviously... But he's the same as Terry Lamb, he's just down Fritz being a great run. But he's inconvenienced by that groin. Blockbusting run by Fritz, he's only 15 metres out. Steve Walters works the play on the angle as Croker. Tries to get the pass, does get the pass to Ferner! Pulling out of Terry Lamb's tackle. Lamb had him by an ankle, but Ferner tugged at that leg and got it free. And before the cover could get to him, he plunged over the line. 
first points on the board for Canberra. An early try to David Ferner, who was in doubt for this game, but was declared fit just a couple of hours ago. Here's the play with Osborne working the run around with Walters back inside. A good ball offloaded and Ferner pulling out of that tackle and over the line. Yeah, great work. Some great work here by Steve Walters and Pongia. Just turned the ball back in, but Ferner did well there to get in behind. But I thought that Dean Pay reacted a little bit too late. Tremendous strength shown by there's that pass that almost forward. Wallers on the run around back inside to Pongia. Pongia, good ball there by. But Ferner did really well to beat Sedaris. And here he is. He pulls out that tackle by Terry Lamb, but Dean Pay reacted too late. David Ferner with a 54% success rate. The leading point scorer for Canberra. A handy position, not far from the posts. A dream start for the Raiders. And there's two more points, and Canberra leads 6-0. Only six minutes of play gone. It's a set play by Canberra, the pop-back pass. Pongi did well because he ran between defenders. Now that ball was contested by Sedaris, but fortunately, Ferner came up with was good enough to step out of tackle. Determined player, Ferner. And that gives him a, a nice break. Back to halfway, Luke Goodwin gets play underway. David Ferner, the try scorer. City first reserve following Mark Geyer's sacking this week. For turning up late for the medical. John, that's the big problem with Canberra. They come out and they really hit you with that opening barrage. If you can withstand that and get control of your game, you're a good chance of beating them because now they It's working for them now. That's 6-0. Yeah, I'm just looking at Very handy, yeah. You've just got to withstand it early. But I, they haven't moved the ball around as much as, as last week. I think they're just being a little more cautious and it's reaping the benefits. But they're hard to peg back when they get a lead like this. We just see they use the kick of Ricky Stewart. He just torments you all day. Well, that wind's uh, sprung up a little and that's behind Canberra at the moment. So that'll aid his kicking game. We see both sides compressed. Canterbury in attack. It's not like them. They normally have an attacking position even in their... 30 metre zone. Canterbury very much bunched at the moment. In fact, you could throw the blanket over them. Only Jason Williams spread. As Chris Anderson, a Canterbury coach, looking on intently. Sedaris gets it away to Smith. Well tackled, down low, diving at his ankles was David Boyle. Lamb thumps it into open spaces, but, well, it wasn't to open spaces. It hooked back towards Belcher. The chasers are down there, though. They can turn a pretty ordinary kick into a good one if the chasers get down on the fullback. Madruku in from the wing. The Fijian Rugby Union International slammed to ground. All over him, Jason Smith. Steve Walters. Down on the halfway line, courtesy of Sedaris. Stewart runs, passes to Daly, quick hands. I mean, wide, out wide there was David Boyle, but he puts it down. Yeah, good work by Jason Williams. He came in very quickly to snuff out what a, was an overlap, but uh, Canberra a little bit adventurous. The tackle getting to him before he could really get a good grip on the ball. I think that was Williams coming in from the wing to make the tackle. Polamata comes away with it. Lamb. Good one up in the line. Halfway through the gap in the other 21s, it was a win to the Raiders, 40 points to 12. That was good work by Laurie Daly, showed enough confidence in Pongia. And in reserve grade, a win to the Bulldogs, 32 to 26. Beautiful offload there by Terry Lamb. Dimmock gets it away, Smith backing him up well, Williams scoops it in, belts a desperate tackle. And one more tackle saved today as well as Boyle came over the top. But a chance here for the Bulldogs. Lamb kicks deep and across field to Druku, takes it. Now, was it in the in-goal area? No. Referee Harrigan says he jumped back into the in-goal area, but a great run by Noah Druku back up towards the 20. Yeah, great play by Kevin Brooks. A little bit disappointed referee Bill Harrigan. Mal Meninga never at any time retired to five metres. So I thought that Canterbury were a little bit harshly done by. At worst, they should have received a penalty. Pongia. 
tackles. John Lomax pulling out of the game with a knee injury, but he and Ponga and Sean Hoppy will all be trying to win Kiwi jerseys to meet Australia later in the year. Fifth tackle, Stewart, chased down by Sedaris. Places a wobbly old kick, came off the side of his boot. Goodwin. Luke Goodwin has been in good form, but he runs into Mal Meninga and a driving tackle from Big Mal. With the representative matches coming up, uh, coming upon us, uh, Canberra would be desperate for this win today. Dimmock working wide with Lamb. Williams on Hoppy. Hoppy makes the tackle. Quick hands by Canterbury. Moved it wide. Yeah, Canterbury's fortunate. They've got both Dimmock and Terry Lamb. They're very good with their hands playing on the edge of the rucks. Now McCracken. Knocked over by Pongia. Lamb. They are intent on getting it out of the middle of the field. That's Canterbury amazing. are not going up the middle. Yeah, Bill Harrigan called Ozzy Osbourne, Paul Osbourne offside and he ran up and made the tackle and you know, the penalty should have been given. Polamata gets hold of Belcher. Dallas comes in to help and they've pinned the fullback down near his goal line. Nadruku. 11 metres out from their own line. The Raiders, who since scoring a try, have spent most of the time in their own end of the field. Canberra leading 6-0. Darren Fritz, who played in England in the off-season. Dean Pay coming in heavily over the top. The low kick. Torpedo driving from Stewart. Good one. Chased by Boyle. Slips it away as Daly came back following. Now it's Williams. Williams shows good speed. Good work by Croker. He missed the first tackler, but uh, had the speed to back up and nail Williams. Tim Sheen's watching on. Now Pay. Dean Pay, who's forced his way into the first grade lineup ahead of Gavin Hill, who played reserve grade. Now Sedaris, nowhere to go. Lost his runners. All he could see was green jerseys. Another player in reserve grade today for Canterbury, Ewan McGrady. Jason Smith. They've used up five tackles. Plays it forward. He's got to do something with it. Realises too late. Well, just in time. Martin Bell, of course, to put the bomber. Not much of a kick, but Terry Lamb comes powering through on Hoppy. Yes, Martin, you can hand in your kicking licence. <laughs> Maybe the message from Chris Anderson there was <laughs> improve the kicking game. Penalty goes to the Raiders. High tackle. Keep him down. There's the ref. Tackler was Smith. There it is, just coming over the top of Ricky Stewart's shoulder from Jason Smith and making contact with the neck. Interesting to take a line through form. There's Gavin Hill watching on, hoping he'll get a chance later in the game. Interesting to take a line through form because Canterbury thrashed Parramatta two weeks ago. Parramatta came out and defeated Canberra narrowly last week. So if you go through form, you'd say that Canterbury would be hot favourites, but there's no indication from the game so far that's going to be the case. Well, that's the unusual thing about rugby league, I suppose, that you think A could beat B and whatever, but it doesn't work that way. Stewart goes to the blind. Walters takes off on the open, and he's looking for support. He was there for ages before he gave it away to Daly. Good tackle by Big Marty. Canterbury couldn't put him on the ground, Steve Walters. Now Stewart. Meninga. Up on him is Smith. He gets away from Smith. Good burst from Meninga. Turns them around. Back goes the defence. It's the last tackle. Stewart puts it up high. Bumping off Smith as he did so. Waiting is Goodwin. Looked for a moment as if he was going to lose it. Good chase. Comes through. Croker there with Belcher to make the tackle. And he did well to stay on the field of play. Certainly a good chase there. Plenty of pressure on Luke Goodwin. McCracken happy to run it from there and away they go. Centre, trying to get it back inside. Bad luck for Canterbury that it was a forward rather than a winger there. McCracken. But there are the signs. Canterbury are prepared to throw the ball in their own quarter as long as it's not terribly risky. That's the difference between some teams who throw it in their own quarter. They take too big a risk. Lamb. Dallas is on side, so this is a vigorous chase. has just worked it out. Ball trickling over the dead ball line, but Brett Dallas, what a speedster he is. He's already scored five tries this season. Leading try scorer along with Jeff Orford from East. 
we see the kick downtown by Terry Lamb, but uh, unfortunately he didn't have a side on shot. But Brett Dallas was definitely on side, the boy from Mackay. Only 18 years of age, Brett Dallas, and uh, lives with the coach. And interesting to see where uh, Bullfrog's already asked Wally Lewis not to name him in the Queensland State of Origin side. Yeah, only 18 years of age, and Peter Moore seemed to think that Brett Dallas does, has a little bit of learning to do. Well, he's, he's already a, a fine footballer. Well, he's, not a, he's, he, he's not a very big kid, but geez, uh, he can s score a try. So the metres game, it's Canberra dominating so far. They've lost the ball here, and Polamata comes away with it. And the penalty going against the Canterbury player here. The, Bill Harrigan reacting very slowly. Taking his time deliberating over that decision. Polamata not too happy at all. He's been cooled down by Jason Williams, and he's still spitting chips. Let's see what happens there. Well, there it was. It was lost by Ferner. Came off the legs of Polamata, and away he went. I don't know whether there was a hand in there, but... Uh, Looked more like a jolt, the jolt of hitting the ground, squirted the ball out. Polamata certainly saw it that way. Here comes Osborne, but he's met solidly by Martin Bella. 23 metres out. Ponya. Good defence. Ricky Stewart moving to the blind side, but it comes to Daly on the open. Fritz up the middle. Still 20 metres out. The defence reading it pretty well that time. Daly, one off the ruck. Meninga. Daly and Stewart playing left and right of the ruck. Now Stewart turns it inside to Pongia, who's working hard. 18 metres out. Last tackle. Will he go for a field goal already? No. He predicted it pretty well. Laurie Daly shoots and misses. Where did you get that one from? 7-0. <laughs> So to make it 7-0 early in the game. After 17 minutes, didn't have success, Laurie Daly. Oh, great players think alike, don't they? It happens that way. <laughs> Would you have predicted it, John? Well, I thought uh, if it was Cronulla, maybe, yes, 7-0, and they could chew the clock up then for the next 68 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Ten, 10 metres short of halfway, Polamata plays it back. Bella, who we haven't seen much of, but now we do from Martin Bella. What a hard man he is to put down. He's lost it, though. That was a tremendous hit-up over the top by Jason Croker. Ferner comes away with it. Osborne. Smith the first in to meet him. Polamata hobbles away. As if he might be just carrying a slight injury. Just inside the Canterbury half now. Daly, one off the ruck. Stewart, two off the ruck. Croker, Belcher. Belcher goes straight through. He looks to Hoppy outside. Feeds it to him. McCracken can't get to him. And Hoppy improves the position. Beautiful piece of backline football from Canberra. Gary Belcher making the break. The runners outside him just threw the defence off him. And it's 10 points to nil in favour of the Raiders. Yeah, big Marty Bella was the problem there. Marty was caught three in. As we see, have a look for the number 10. It was Daly inside Stewart, and then there's the dummy. McCracken slid, Belcher went through. He took the fullback on to commit him, and then gave it to Hoppy, who outpaced McCracken. Yeah, one of the adjusters wasn't there in the defensive pattern. We're having a big Marty's caught out wide, the fastball. Belcher gets on the outside of big Marty and Billy, grabbed the three on two, just drawing the fullback, giving it to Hoppy, who brings it around and puts it about 20 metres just to the right of the uh, the uprights. A big Marty being caught out of uh, position there. Hoppy, fourth try of the year. In fact, all four wingers in this game. Scored plenty of tries. Nadruku has three, Hoppy four, Dallas five, and Jason Williams, from memory, has four as well. David Ferner, slightly more difficult kick Still, kicker of his ability would back himself to put this one through. Only about 15 metres off centre field. And Ferner hits it well off the upright and bounces out. You Score remains 10 nil. You are a mock. <laughs> Should have put it over. There's only an inch in it. Good control play by the Raiders. They knock the ball to the left 
with good forward play, but the problem with Canterbury, Bella got caught wide, so did Dean Pay. So uh, that worked well, that play. It's typical of Canberra where you work it one way and then with a big back line sweep the other and Hoppy's good enough to be on the end of it. Interesting comparison of the forward work rates. Paul Osborne has hit it up eight times. Martin Bella just getting through two hit-ups so far in the game, and one of them he lost the ball, so Bella not starting off as strongly as he had in, has in most other games this season, but he makes a good tackle that time. Chasing them down, it was big Darren Fritz who hit the earth pretty hard. Steve Walters out of dummy half. Got it away to Boyle, onto Hoppy. Hoppy gets outside Williams, coming across the centre. Great cover defence by Darren Setter, the second rower. Stewart. Places it down the line, had very little angle to work with, but picks up 25 metres. A yeah, great break there by Hoppy down the outside. And Ricky Stewart capitalising on that break, just poking the ball in, picking up 30 metres the easy way. Well, is Ricky Stewart still in the New South Wales selectors' minds? There's Brett Mullins and Steve Stone on the bench for Canberra. Or will they be looking at Craig Polamata? Or Jason Taylor. Or John Simon. Well, John Simon Goodwin. did play last year, didn't he? Well, he does have a kicking game, and uh, no one's got a, a better kicking game than Ricky Stewart, probably. And Luke Goodwin has been hurt. Seems to be clutching at his head. And here he is as he came across field. Oh, solid contact on the way through from Meninga. Might have put a knee from Mel. Bella offloads to Polamata. Polamata trying to shake them off. I think and he's got a problem with his knee. Dimmock goes wide to McCracken. Good defence once more from David Boyle. He's making some very effective tackles. Lamb goes straight for the posts. Back goes Belcher. Deep, perfectly judged kick by Lamb. Beautifully weighted. And of course, Gary Belcher will be looking for a big game to cement a spot in the Queensland State of Ireland side. We see Nadruka, that famous step of Nadruka. Just to give Martin Bella some credit, he was first man down there in the chase on that kick as well. So he's making amends. Here is Laurie Daly. Oh, hands away, hands away. Great Henry. effort by players like Daly. They're Relief. playing Relief. football Relief. Relief. only 18 hours after they played 80 minutes last night at a tough level. Here's Steve Wallace trying to sneak down the blind. Stewart goes to the line, tries the little kick towards centre field. Goodwin, maybe still a little shaky, knocked it back. Well, he did well there, good, but he's got up, saw the problem there, and uh, he's just hobbling around the field. He'll have to be replaced. Canterbury in slow motion at the moment, except for Brett Dallas. The rest of them just straggling back across field, all of them offside. Goodwin in real trouble. Here comes Ewan McGrady. Williams beats a tackle. Oh, Jason Williams and Sean Hoppy finding space down that touchline. Yeah, Williams has got it. Too close to the touchline on that occasion. Forced the pass back inside as we see Hoppy take the ball away from the dummy half position. Fritz working inside Stewart. And uh, Canterbury have made a, a boo boo here. They're, they're supposed to put you and McGrady on until. Goodwin is off the field. Goodwin just crosses the touchline now. Being helped from the field. Belchin. Nidruku. Dimmick gets hold of him. Important tackle from Dimmick. Fifth tackle. Stewart steps away from Smith. Puts it up. Daly's offside. And Ewan McGrady allows it to bounce over the dead ball line. The result's the same. It's a 22 tap. Lucky for him, there was no one coming through. All of the Canberra players decided that it was going to go dead. Well, it's a dangerous practice. A rugby league football can do strange things. And maybe he thought the ball was going over the dead ball line. It does eventually, but the ball has a habit of standing on its end and bouncing backwards. Well, Canberra could go to the air now, Arthur. If they've used yes. up five rucks, they could well go to the air with uh, McGrady back there. Well, it's an opportunity for Ewan McGrady. He's been languishing in reserve grade, so we see him get on the outside. And the total error so far, Canterbury 13 to Canberra's five mistakes. Most of those errors missed tackles by Canterbury. It's a strange game of football. We haven't seen a penalty for offside play. 
free. Harrigan usually keeps them apart pretty well. Here's Dimmick, taken by Stewart. A penalty against Pongia here, holding back Kerry Lamb. Pongia was just camping right at his back, just making contact with him. And I thought that was a uh, personal foul, so could have warranted 10 minutes in the sin bin. Well, really, that only happens when it's a, a try on the cards, isn't here? It is just in the left of your picture there. as Pongia grappling with Lamb, half, kind of let him through. That might have been a fairly tough penalty, but I guess the contact was there. Oh, yeah, the quick, quick tap, tap Sedaris. Jim Sedaris has a few skills, unloads to Dean Payne. Now a position where Canberra's compressed defence may be tested only Bill 10 metres out from their own line. to get Canberra line. back. They're only about, about four metres now. Come on, Billy, get, make the Canberra Raiders get back. He pointed to them but didn't force them back. Lamb to McCracken. I hear the referee calling, have a look at me. Back to eight metres. Bella. Big Marty's turned into a ball player. Darren Smith, they're losing ground. It's Lamb. They've lost 10 metres. And Osborne puts Lamb on the ground. Polamata, Dimmock, gets the pass to Smith, running inside the decoy. Penley had to go, gee. Sedaris, holds it up for Bella. Only five metres out, it's the fifth tackle. Canberra right on their goal line. Lamb, goes wide. Smith, inside to McGrady, chased by Stewart, he pops it up. It was the last tackle, and Canberra had it. Well, they took the wrong option, the... Uh... The best play, better play, would have been to go on the outside. They looked for the inside pass to Ewan McGrady. He was well marked. Osman. Well, I thought that Bill Harrigan was very lenient with the Raiders. They were offside, probably three of those five rucks, six rucks. Well, you're dead right because he pointed to them when they were only five metres back. Admittedly, he wasn't back to give them the line, but he told them to go back but didn't penalise them. We see six more as Laurie Daly plays with that ball. Marty playing sweeper, aren't <laughs> Daly and Meninga all over him, slow to play the ball. And the error's mounting all the time with Canterbury. A few more lost possessions. They've lost it three times. Canberra haven't given it away once as yet. Dimmock. Striving to keep it alive and does to pull him out. Lamb. McGrady running wide. Williams now. Comes back away from the touchline, out of one tackle. Left Boyle behind. They're a better side when they have Polamounter and Lamb taking them on, taking them to the line. Dimmock, centre. Meninga okay. slips over the top. I thought Mal Meninga let him go. He did make contact, but realised and so pulled out of the tackle so he didn't hurt him, but still was penalised. Well, he's going to take it. Uh, Terry Lamb's decided to take the points. Well, was there, no doubt there's contact here, but was there any... Well, it was Injury, a I suppose tackle. fair enough. Okay. By the way, the referees have been ruling this season. I guess that's the penalty. And it was Big Mal. A hit from Big Mal is like <laughs> a truck hitting you. <laughs> that's Terry Lamb to shoot for goal. Gavin Hill has been doing the kicking for Canterbury, but he's in reserve grade. And Lamb has only kicked uh, one goal this season from two attempts, I think it is. And the ball rolling off the mound. I'm sure Terry Lamb still loves his goal kicking though. He spend, used to spend hours and hours at training showing everyone what a great goal kicker he was. In the days before he was given the honour on the field, or given the responsibility at least. Right in front, 22 metres out, and Lamb pilots it over. The Canterbury with their first points on the board, but Canberra still leading 10 minutes before half time, it's 10-2. We see the ball back inside there. Uh, oh, Dimmick and uh, gee, that was a pretty hot one there. Back into centre, but he was a tackle very high, but no I, don't know. I, I didn't think there was much contact with the neck when you looked at it from the front on angle. Oh, well, we'll agree to disagree. I agree with you that I wouldn't want to be tackled by Mal Meninga. Wouldn't want to be, wouldn't want to shake hands with Mal Meninga. Ferner. Lamb. Hands it off to Dallas. Up to the 20, he comes. He hasn't seen much ball yet, Brett Dallas. Canterbury have been keen to offload. They're standing in tackles and fighting to get their arms free. His centre gets out of Meninga's tackle. That's determination from Darren's centre. 
They are not easy marks for Canterbury players. They're going to fight all the way before you put them on the ground. Here's Pay. Polamanda. Dimmock. McGrady outside him. Dimmock goes downfield. McGrady inside. Belcher can't quite knock him over. McGrady's still alive. Trying to bone oh, McCracken. Great pass. McCracken angle tap. He's over. Great ball from McGrady. And great balance by Jared McCracken. Tremendous sense of where the backup was from, first of all, Jim Dimmock and then Jason McGrady. McGrady looked to be surrounded but found the support. And in the end, McCracken stumbling over the line. Some Jim Dimmock has really been making an, an impact on this game. He is in there inside Terry Lamb a lot of the time. Here's McGrady, just gets away from Belcher's tackle, stays alive, can't find any support on the left, goes to the right, and there's McCracken. Yes, yeah, some great ball movement on this try. We see some good pass. We see Sadaras there just passing the ball out onto Dean Pay. He offloads a great ball here to Pollam out of the quick pass on to Dimock. And here's Ewan McGrady, but look who else is looming up in the inside, Terry Lamb. And there was just ankle tap there, gets up again, continues, and Jared McCracken puts himself into a hole. And Gary Belcher got up off the ground to have another go at a tackle. He didn't quite get to McCracken, but a good effort by Belcher to get up and have another go. Jared McCracken's second try of the year, just back from a two-week suspension for punching in a fiery encounter with Cronulla two weeks ago. <laughs> no reaction from Arthur Beetson wearing the caterpillar on his top lip this week. Terry Lamb, 18 metres in from touch, hit his first kick well, this one's pushed to the right. And Canberra lead 10 points to 6. Still right. 8 minutes till half time. With a nose like Arthur's, you wouldn't want to underline it, would you? <laughs> Canterbury's uh, problem today has been the fact they haven't gone forward in previous rucks before they spread the ball. This time they're on the back of a terrific run by uh, Darren Santa out of dummy half. And there's all the skill that goes with it and the speed. And this is a real money ball. Look at this one back inside. Picks up McCracken. And he's just got the pace to get there. Great stuff by the Bulldogs. Interesting point for the Queensland selectors looking towards the state of origin as who to pick at fullback. Gary Belcher well in the running, but Dale Shearer has put out some claims recently with good performances for the Gold Coast. There's not a bad fullback playing for the Broncos and Julian O'Neill. That's another one. Good burst by Brett Dallas returning that kick. Gee, when Canberra go wide, invariably Jim Dimmock's got something to do with it. He's got good hands, good oh, awareness. He's, he's come of age as a player, John, hasn't he? They've got a great. Uh, back are uh, three there. I'm talking about the five-eight half and the lock forward. Yeah, they're well equipped in that area, but they could have learned a lesson from that last play. If you knock it forward first and to turn the opposition around, you've got a better chance of spreading. They might miss Gavin Hill in that area. It is uh, Martin Bell with his second kick of the well, game. Shit. Flushed by success, but it's an awful kick. All the way Gary Belcher brings it back, and the first one wasn't, wasn't a real beauty either. He weighted it nicely, right into Gary Belcher's hands. Metres gained, 815 for Canberra. There's a change over position, a great hit. And the Hoppy's down, and Jason Williams is also down in back play. Polamata, Darren Smith. Hands away, Marcus, hands off. 12 metres inside the Raiders' half. Canterbury very keen to score another try to hit back, to level it up before half-time. Dimmock. Lamb, quick pass to McGrady. He tries to find McCracken. A race between the number 13s and the race won by Jason Crokery. Oh, Dimmock's got it back. The crowd hurting. They believe that that ball was stripped from Jason Croker. Oh, they'd boo Santa Claus at home crowd. <laughs> well, that was fair enough. He lost the ball. Smith. Jason Smith. Polamounter, Dean Pay gets it away. They really have been skillful in that area. His centre gets it to Lamb, cutting back inside. Where's the support? McCracken arrived too late. There was tries, a try waiting on the left. Sadaris, McGrady puts the kick through. Stewart belts it over the dead ball line. And Canterbury have had a lot of possession the last five minutes, and uh, Canberra starting to wilt. Ricky Stewart yelling instructions. 
Canberra's ball security hasn't been all that good in the last few minutes. Well, it made all the difference when Dimmock got the ball back from Croker. Canberra play, taking plenty of time. Stewart's drop kick over the halfway line to Lamb. Terry Lamb comes out looking for Dallas. Jim Dimmock really is controlling the centre of the attack for Canterbury, isn't he? No, he's a great link man between the backs and the forwards. He takes a lot of pressure off Colin Mounter and Lamb. Bella up the middle. Pongia meets him. Fritz there as well. Sedaris urging his forwards forward. And here they go again. With Dean Pay taking the ball up. That's what they lacked earlier, Arthur. They just that go forward before they went wide. Well, they didn't right. have the possession camera had either. Colum out and skips across to the blind side. Stewart there to meet him. Only nine metres out, it's the last tackle. They go to the blind side. Smith pops it back inside. Sedaris keeps it alive. Colum out dives for the line. And that's great quick hands again by Canterbury. They're a very skillful side in 1993. Chris Anderson must be very pleased to score just before half time, even though Polamata has been injured. Yeah, this is a great try by Canterbury. Some great skills, Sedaris and Co. We see. A lot of players came to the open side, McCracken, one of them, and may have just drawn some of the defence, but they still went to what looked to be a fairly crowded blind side. Well, they and worked on that mark of defence, didn't they? You have a look at here. We see the ball going out to Fessy. The Smith. ball back inside by Smith. Sedaris. Here's Sedaris and here's another inside pass to Polamara and the knee's going in there by Ricky Stewart but Ricky Stewart's entitled to defend his line. I think this is what the crowd is reacting to. Beautiful inside ball as they went wide and then came back through the centre of the Ricky ruck. Stewart go in there? Well, I mean, Ricky Stewart's thinking about saving a try, well, not exactly, about injuring yeah. the opposition player. Beautiful hands there by Jason Smith. Jim Sedaris, quick reflexes. Polamara knew the weight of the line was low down. Fifth try of the year for Craig Polamata. They're sharing them around, the Canterbury backs. Polamata, an Australian rugby union schoolboy in 1990. And quite an argument last week as to whether he should be representing Queensland if picked for a state of origin match or New South Wales because he spent from the age of three to 18 in Queensland and played his first senior football, if you like, for Canterbury. Lamb. This is it wide. So a couple of conversions missed, a couple of shots of goal missed by Terry Lamb, otherwise Canterbury would lead, it's 10 points all. A little bit of blood leaking from Terry Lamb's lip, he went to the blood bin last week with a bad cup of the lip, or the mouth. This has been a great comeback by Canterbury. Canterbury benefiting from extra possession of late, and this was on the back of a real good run by Dean Pay. so they're going forward, and then no one denies the fact that they can really shift the ball sideways. Burner kicks deep to the left. Darren Center takes it. He's had a very good game, Center. He's a very talented footballer from the victorious under-21 side two years ago. Jim, S Jim Sedaris almost stayed alive there. Is Luke Goodwin back on his feet? Well, that's a big back slam there by point. Laurie Daly on the big bowling ball, Martin Bella. Dean Pay takes off. Starting to show why Chris Anderson picked him in first grade today. Now Jason Smith, that pass well, very flat, if not forward. Polamata under pressure from Croker. That's a beautiful kick. Didn't take the bounce. It looked as if it had found the line. Belcher, nowhere to go. There's a straight line of blue and white jerseys, six of them lined across the field. And the Canberra Raiders very slow to recover. Tim Sheens, the Canberra coach, must be a little concerned that this is following the pattern of last week where Canberra started off on fire and then started to come back to the field as the game went on. It's a strong one by Pongia. A bit skinny out here, Canberra. Boyle, halfway through, and he gets through. Finally broke the tackle. David Boyle upfield, looks for Hoppy, goes for McGrady. Hoppy turning onto the pass. Pass looked okay. Well, Boyle had done everything he could to commit the defence. He went right to McGrady, the fullback. We see it's once again, it's Terry Lamb, the man who misses Boyle here. But I thought he took the wrong option here. I thought he had the dummy sold. No, there was a man on him there. You apologise there, but uh, it was definitely a scoring opportunity. I thought McCracken opened the door as he did so in that earlier try by uh, the Canberra side. 
for Canterbury with a couple of problems in backline defence, but they came back from a two-try deficit to level the score. And at half time, it's ten points all between the Bulldogs and the Raiders. This is your Saturday afternoon of sports, bringing you live rugby league action at its best on ABC, your national network. It's all tied up down at Bruce Stadium, 10 all, and a big crowd there. Will I go home happy or disappointed? We'll know shortly this afternoon. Bringing you up to date with other football, and two AFL matches are being played today in Melbourne. Fitzroy, comfortable leaders over Sydney, and Footscray and Essendon, uh, Footscray out by 11 points. So a couple of good matches there. Maybe Sydney a little bit on the way back. Could make a contest of that one with Fitzroy. Well, the second of the feature races out at uh, Randwick today was the Champagne Stakes, over 1,600 metres. March Hare and Danger were the equal favourites at 7 to 4. March Hare on the inside and Pride of Rancho the outside go together. Staff Sergeant starts to move up to make a line of three from Darbass. LA Glen comes up the hill, four and five deep. And Danger getting a run between runners is starting to come home quickly as well. And so too is Reign of Honour. In fact, there was a line of seven across the track at the 200 where LA Glen has dashed to the lead. Danger looking for a way out of a pocket is into the clear now with March Hare. And down the outside, Reign of Honour in front though, LA Glen. Now March Hare being urged along to the line. March Hare, he only asked for an effort in the last hundred. He scooted away to win by a length. BLA Hands and heels did it for March Hare, 7-4, as you see Danger also, and LA Glen at 4-1, to one, taking second place in the Champagne Stakes at Randwick. Well, the National Diving Championships are taking place in Melbourne, and some more results to bring you up to date with. First of all, the women's platform final, and the West Australians, Vinika Arlo and Natalie Johnson, filling first and second. A New Zealand diver, Tanya Patterson, actually came in ahead of Bindi Man Mansfield, but because this is the Australian Championships, Bindi is credited with the third. And in men's competition... Their three metre final and Michael Murphy, some outstanding diving. He picked up five tens during his afternoon's uh, efforts and Russell Butler second and Shane Lack third. And uh, so two Queenslanders first and third and Butler, the Victorian, filling second place. Well, this week at the British Squash Open, 25-year-old Michelle Martin became the first Australian to win the tournament in 10 years. Earlier today, when she was still on deck, Karen Tai spoke to the new champion. Martin went through the tournament without dropping a game. In the final, taking just 35 minutes to defeat England's Suzanne Horner, 9-7, 9-0, The last Australian to take the Open was Vicky Cardwell back in 1983. After her win, Martin gave special thanks to her uncle and former Olympic rower, Lionel Roberts. He's been with me for now two and a half years, and I really thank him for this. And Michelle joins us in the studio this afternoon. Michelle, congratulations. Thank and you. your uncle, obviously, a very big influence on you. Yeah, he's been with me, as I said, for two and a half years. He's been putting me through my paces. And there's been a few other people along the way as well, Ian Yates and Brian Hopley. He's associated with the rugby team. And just everybody, really, has put in a lot along the way, and it's all benefited. Well, you got the number one world ranking after the retirement of New Zealand's Susan Devoy. Did it make that win in the British Open all that more special that you were really proving to the world, yes, I'm number one? Yeah, it was a long... Um, during the year, like, it, the rankings came out that I was on number one, the number one ranking. And from then it was like everybody just wanted to see if you, you, know, you were going to prove yourself. And until the British Open came up, everybody was sort of saying, you know, it's still wide open, anybody can take it and all that. But I think I'm just happy now that I did prove that I, I've earned the number one position. Your family name is so entwined with, with squash, yourself and your brothers. There have been changes to the sport. I mean, you've instigated a lot of the clothing changes. There's been perspex courts and the like. Have you seen a change in the reception to the sport by Australians over the last few years? It's still a long, hard process. I mean, everybody's, um, uh, everybody knows about squash, but it's still educating the Australian public is um, quite hard to come along and actually pay even to watch squash. It's just, it's hard work. And what about making a living out of it? How, how good a living can you make out of squash? Well, hopefully you now it'll um, start coming, you know, to meet the ends because before, a couple of years ago, I was, you know, thinking about giving up because of the fact that, I mean, you can only go for so long in your life without making a lot of money and you have to sort of think further down the line, what are you going to do with yourself? And now that I've hit a peak in my career, I think I'll keep going for a while. 
The British Open is a second only in prestige to the World Championships. They're coming up later this year in South Africa. Are you confident of adding that title uh, to yeah. the tally as well? Yeah, I'll go in there with um, well, this one under the belt now. So we've got a few tournaments coming up in about three weeks' time and then leading up to the World Open will be um, a long, hard uh, training session, I think, with especially being in altitude in Johannesburg. And Japan is coming up shortly. Yeah, we've got the first, I have never been there before, so it'll be quite interesting. We've got the Japan Open, then we go to Hong Kong and then Malaysia. So. And taking a break this weekend, a well-deserved rest. Yes, and I'm looking forward to it. OK, thanks, Michelle, for your time. Congratulations once again on the British Open win and all the best for the future. Thank you. Yes, I'm sure Australia joins in congratulating Michelle Martin as the British Open squash champion, and I'm sure she'd love to emulate the efforts of Heather Mackay. Well, we're going to go back to Rugby League now. It's all tied up at Bruce Stadium at 10-all. Here's Warren Boland. Thanks, Steve Rebilliard, and uh, good second half coming up here at Bruce Stadium too. Well, the first representative games of the season were played last night, and the Sydney City teams triumphant over their country rivals in both games. Of course, the New South Wales and Queensland State of Origin teams will be named on Monday. But let's go back to last weekend. It was a tipster's nightmare, but another strong performance by St George gave them six out of six. At Belmore, Canterbury scored the first try, but spent much of the first half tackling. Dragons, Brad Mackay and Jason Donnelly inspired St George to finish much the stronger over tiring Bulldog defence in the second half for an 18-14 win. At the football stadium, West scored two tries to lead Souths 12-2 just before half-time. But Souths hit back as Craig Field started and finished off a four-pointer to get the Rabbitohs back into the game. Wests fell into error and the Rabbitohs swept to an 18-12 victory. In Brisbane, Penrith had a try called back for a forward pass. Forward pass says referee Eddie Ward. And seconds later, the Broncos raced 95 metres in a spectacular display. This is Kevin Walters up over the quarter line. The injury-weakened Panthers were then destroyed by a back-to-their-best Brisbane, 34-8. In the Battle of the Basement, Cronulla were far too enthusiastic for a disjointed Balmain, winning convincingly 18-14 at Shark Park. At Tweed Heads, the Gold Coast picked up their first points of the season against an out-of-form Newcastle. The Seagulls scored three tries to nil, winning 22-6. At Wollongong, North's Darrell Halligan kicked three long-range penalty goals and added a 40-metre field goal for good measure to give the Bears a 7-0 lead at half-time. In the second half, the Steelers, hampered by a poor kicking game, threw the ball around but couldn't crack North's brick wall defence. North's the victors, 7-2. At the completion of round six, the table was splitting into two groups. A top nine of potential semi-finalists at a bottom seven whose final five chances are already looking grim. On top, all by themselves, St George on 12 points. North's also undefeated on 11, Canterbury 10, East's 9, then four teams on eight points. Manly, Brisbane, Illawarra and Parramatta. Of this top eight, North's, East's, Manly, Illawarra and Parramatta will always be hard to beat but the teams who impressed me most as being capable of winning a grand final are St George, Canterbury and Brisbane. And I'd add to that, Canberra, who are on a precarious six points. Behind them, Souths and Newcastle on four, Gold Coast, Penrith, Wests and Cronulla all on two, and Balmain bringing up the rear. Off the field, Mark Geyer's turbulent career took another turn when he was dropped from the Sydney first team. Geyer arrived 20 minutes late for an already rescheduled medical examination. An emotional Geyer then clashed angrily with City Origin and New South Wales coach Phil Gould. Midweek, an ongoing dispute over merchandising between the league and the Brisbane Broncos came to a head, with chairman Ken Arthurson threatening the club with expulsion. Well, the options are open to the league is not to admit them to the, uh, to the competition. That's the final. Uh, option. That's the worst thing that could happen. Nobody would want to see that happen and I'm sure common sense will prevail and we won't get around to doing that. say that there's a, an issue of $12,000 outstanding that they want to resolve and uh, we could be expelled from the competition. It's uh, certainly from our point of view very disappointing. Last night, the country cousins took on the city slickers in a selection trial for blue state of origin jerseys. Fiddler, Fiddler gets it away, McCoy puts it 
puts it down, and there's the first point. Scored by Sydney, and scored by Brad Mackay. Sydney scoring the only try of the match in the first half, and they went on to win 7-0. Sydney Origin beating Country Origin, and in the first game, Sydney first had a big win over Country first by 40-odd points. So a significant trial, of course, for the New South Wales Origin selectors. Arthur, uh, what did you think uh, what was the most significant positional, uh, I guess, information to come out of it? Well, I think that Brad Fittler may sew up the 5-8 spot, but will probably move Laurie Daly to one of the centre spots. Uh, the halfback prop, uh, spot is up for grabs. I also think the hooking job is up for grabs, and uh, they probably have to get out for th three spots for the front row. I think Lazarus Salvo and uh, Ian Roberts will make up that front row, or maybe Roberts could move back to the second row, but uh, I think there are a few blokes who will be a little bit worried come Sunday night. Interesting to note in this game, Laurie Daly's had a pretty quiet first half, hasn't he? he, well, might he be running, has. I don't know whether he's running out of gas or he just can't get into the game. Well, it's tough psychologically uh, to back up. They've had a hard game last night. Even though it wasn't a bruising game last night, it was uh, a very fast game, so they're going to be a little bit exhausted. They're going to go through... Uh, a mental breakdown out here somewhere so they've got to try and get themselves up for this second half but uh, talking about the game here it uh, the problem is for uh, Canberra is that they wanted too much possession late in that first half yeah they certainly did they came back to the field well and truly and if we have a look at the halftime stats there they are overall tackles Canberra have made 103 to Canterbury's 80 overall errors 14 by Canberra 20 by Canterbury Penalties three apiece, scrums two apiece, metres gained. Fairly even, even though at one stage uh, it was really shifting Canberra's way. 8.96 at half time, they've made, metres gained. Canterbury, 861. And Canterbury have had more ball, 55% of the time they've had the ball, compared to Canberra's 45, 10 points all at half time. Just having a quick look at the errors. 15 missed tackles by Canterbury to Canberra's 11. Three losses of possession by Canterbury to Canberra's one and uh, other handling errors two apiece so that's the breakdown of the error count as Mel Meninga leads them back out are there any changes, it'll be interesting to see whether the coaches start to use the interchange to rest a couple of players can see any changes in the Canberra lineup as they came out but they do have to pick up their intensity I do think Ricky Stewart has got to take the odds to it and run more well, that's his problem, is he's carrying that groin, but the big problem for Canberra, as I said before, is that they turned over too much possession late in that second half. Uh, they've just got to control possession a little bit more, so it's really going to be an arm wrestle this first 10 or 15 minutes. But the signs were there that Canterbury well on the way back after conceding 10 points to Canberra. And does Canterbury take the field? Can't see any changes in their lineup either. Of course, they did have a couple of changes early on with Darren Setter coming into the lineup with Simon Gillies on the bench and center is still out there and Luke Goodwin being replaced by Ewan McGrady. McGrady is still on the field. So it appears that both lineups unchanged from uh, just before half time. Martin Bella with nine hit ups. So Bella playing a much stronger second 20 minutes of the first half than the first. He's also made 15 tackles and leading the way for Canberra, Paul Osborn. 15 tackles and 10 hit-ups. So both those players getting through some work. And I think it was John who pointed out that Dean Pay and Martin Bella were really starting to go forward. Second half underway, David Ferner gets Canberra moving deep into Canterbury's half. In fact, that is Simon Gillies. So Simon Gillies is on the field. His first touch of the ball in the match. And a break immediately by Brett Dallas. Ricky Stewart standing in the second line of defence. Collars him. And Ricky Stewart down and back play. Really struggling. Lamb. Standing very wide. Darren Smith. Gets it back to Lamb. McCracken. Carves back through them. Loses his footing on the halfway as Osmond comes over the top. And this is easy yardage for the Canterbury team. John, any word from the dressing rooms, the coaches? A oh, pretty simple message from the Canterbury room. They just want to go forward first before they spread the ball. And in the Canberra room, I think uh, they'll need some more possession this half to hold out uh, the Canterbury side, in my opinion. And Jimmy Sedaris making a mistake there. The feed going to the Canberra green machine. Just on Ricky Stewart, they're talking about, you know, what's available in second grade. They just haven't got... 
uh, a halfback in second grade. They tried Steve Stone in that position. It didn't work. So I think they're prepared to put up with Ricky Stewart, only playing about 40% fit. Well, Trevor Shadell has been scoring plenty of tries for them, having uh, joined Canberra from Cronulla. He doesn't have the kicking game of a Ricky Stewart. Belcher breaks the tackle, can't get away from Bella. That tackle had to be made. Dean Pace whoops across all over the top of Hoppy. They're only 30 metres out. The long passes. A looping ball from Stewart finds Daly. Daly takes off across field. Meninga now taps on the pace. Madruku inside. Madruku out of a tackle. Great first from Noah Madruku. And what a pass to David Boyle. A sensational try from Canberra. And Noah Madruku, who the Canberra fans have taken to their hearts. What a great first it was. Mal Meninga got him moving, but Nadruku still had a lot of work to do. And then a tremendous pass, looping it out to David Boyle, who's been in everything, and he finished it off. Look at this pass to get it wide. Laurie Daly waited for it to plummet into his arms, drew a bit of defence off Meninga. Mal Meninga runs, but we haven't seen a lot of Meninga out in the back line today. Nadruku beats two, beats three, swings a brilliant ball away to David Boyle, who positioned himself very nicely. Great try. Yeah, two, a, a great wide pass here. Two, Stewart, the left to right pass, turning around. Biffs across, but I think Darren Smith is the man who was at fault here. He should have hung back inside once the Duke had drifted back in. We see a couple of missed tackles there, but a great offload back into David Boyle, who backs up. David Boyle scored four tries in nine first-grade games last season. And he's made every post a winner, given his chance here in front of Brett Mullins in this game. David Ferner with a difficult shot at goal. Eight metres in from the touchline. Into what breeze there is. Hooks it around too much. So the score, Canberra go to the lead once again. It's 14 points to 10, three minutes gone in the second half. This long ball by Ricky Stewart really gives them some daylight out there. And uh, Laurie Daly did it well. He started to slide at crossfield. There's no problem, really. Darren Smith hung off Meninga. I think he should have been a little wider and really gone up on Mal. Then he put himself out the back door. He tries to get Nadruku now, but Nadruku good enough to uh, spin a ball to boil. And uh, that's certainly a good way to open the second stanza. Nadruku running like he was playing in the Hong Kong Sevens then, wasn't he? No, this is exactly what Canberra do. They really come out at you. We've just got to hang on for dear life in that first 10 minutes. Big hit by Jason Smith then on Fritz. But it must be tough on guys like uh, Laurie Daly who back up. John, they really go through the pain barrier. Yeah, we'll get well paid for it, Arthur. I thought you'd say that. <laughs> Burner. Tackle midway between the 30 and the 40. Can't say the half on the quarter line anymore. Here's a good run by Stewart in a bit of trouble as he was chased down on the last. Finally boots it off his left and races downfield to McGrady. And McGrady collared by the tackle of Croker and Stewart, the kicker. Yeah, tremendous chase by Ricky Stewart. Showed great evasion skills. Here are the top tackles for both sides. David Ferner leading the way for Canberra. And uh, Paul Osborne up there with 15. Martin Bella doing the tackling for Canterbury. On the blind side, Dean Pay slips it away to Williams. The Canterbury have to hit back now. They gradually started to assert some dominance in the latter part of this first half. Here's Polamata. Jason, tackle. Jason Smith showing some good skills as McGrady decides to run. And throws it out looking for Dallas, but it was, went nowhere. It was the last tackle, and, po and uh, once McGrady got caught in traffic, he knew he had to get rid of it. Yeah, we said here, like the ball going out, Jason well, McGrady. Just... Rick McGrady just knew you. <laughs> you and McGrady. One of the just... McGrady's. <laughs> well. <laughs> well, it's a family of about 14, isn't it? Yeah, you're not wrong. In fact, Canterbury offloaded Ricky and Jason McGrady. Peter Mort decided uh, that he didn't need them, but one of the McGrady boys has just joined West. <laughs> Here goes Croker down the touchline. Back inside to Nadruku. Across comes McGrady. Dallas gets hold of him as well. Rides him to ground. Only nine metres out. 
Here come the Raiders. They're all deep. They're all swarming up on the open side. Daly charges downfield. and then get 10 metres out. Well tackled. Terry Lamb went low, but they were offside. Referee Harrigan playing the advantage. Yeah, good refereeing by Bill Harrigan, but... Daly Kennedy takes a quick catch. His... Daly goes for oh, it. lost the ball. He lost it. Daly stretching out to try and reach the line. Lost it, so they, on the first tackle, they've given away the advantage, but he very nearly got no. there. And Timmy Sheen's down there, pulling at his hair. I think he would have preferred to see Daly go for the goal. Shot at goal. I'm going to give them a six-point buffer. Tremendous football by Canberra. Really bursting downfield, but Nadruka was hurt. He's limping to the touchline. Simon Gillies. Now, this could be dangerous if a player like Terry Lamb is aware. Brett Dallas is unmarked. Mal Meninga's on that side of the field. A pass goes out to Williams. Slips it to Sedaris. They're working that wing. Meninga backpedalling. Smith puts it down. And the threat is averted. There's Noah Nadruka, who's been in brilliant form in the second half. But I thought they could have taken the drinker off the other side. That would have allowed Brett Mullins to get on the field. They left themselves short-handed down that flank and uh, never took the opportunity, Canterbury. And Canberra back in possession, 32 metres out. And here's a chance out here. Yeah, Brett Mullins on that wing. Meninga, Belcher, beautifully tackled. Pile driver from Darren Smith. Boyle works the blind. Osborne, quick hands here from Canberra. On to Belcher. Canterbury defence, trying to slow them down now. They're being bustled here, Canterbury. Walters, out of dummy half. Can't get through. Last tackle coming up. Ricky Stewart points to the heavens. The finger went high in the air, and the ball follows it now. But it's gone right up in the air, straight up. Nobody wants it. Darren Fritz went after it. He was onside. No one had touched it. Fern has got it in six more. Fern loses it. Sedaris has got it for Canterbury. What a debacle. Canberra very nearly getting six more tackles. Now they've got a penalty, Canterbury. Yeah, Pongi are just stripping that ball. But that was a great opportunity for Canberra there. We see Gillies taking the ball up here. Just what Pongia and Belcher in the tackle. And it's the arm of Belcher, not Pongia. It strips the ball. McGrady goes for touch. Almost straight across field, only picked up six or seven metres. And a replacement in the Canterbury side, Broken Shear. In 41, he's on for Dean Pay. Series of errors by Canberra there. Has released the screws they were putting on Canterbury. First Daly going for the try on the first tackle. Then the mistake when they had six more tackles after that kick and Fritz couldn't get it back. So a chance now for Canterbury to work play into Canberra's territory. Polamata, Lamb, quickly onto Smith. He's got McCracken outside. Lamb, McCracken, bustling runner. 14 points to 10 in favour of the Raiders. I'm just amazed at the latitude given by Billy Harrigan. The Canberra Raiders well up in front of him, but hasn't done anything about it. Fifth tackle now. At 35 metres out, McGrady a dummy half. Off his left boot. Puts it down towards Belcher coming through McGrady. Belcher cool and calm. Very nearly could have got the pass to Hoppy. Yeah, very poor chase by the Canterbury machine, but uh, Belcher doesn't drop those balls. They're sinners for him. We'll see it's him. really more the, the kick from McGrady kicking out a dummy half off his left foot. Never gave the chases that much chance. Here's Osborne now. David Ferner heading for the touchline. Pongia. Steve Stone in 19, Warren the replacement. And David Ferner has made 26 tackles. The best of the Canberra defenders. Daly, Belcher trying to cut through that hole. McCracken thumps him to ground. Stewart stabbing for the line and will find it. Great direction in the kick of Ricky Stewart. He was eight metres in from touch and he picks up 40 metres nevertheless. You see the kick here just rolling end on end and uh, picking up the easy 40 metres. But it's interesting to note that Craig Polamata isn't playing the sweeping role anymore. Johnny's filling in the line, leaving... They've left too many gaps out wide. 
Yeah, I don't think you can afford to do that, Arthur, with a team like uh, Canberra, which uses the width of the field very well. That ball came back out of the scrum so quickly. Terry Lamb had his back to Polamata as he got it into his hands. And Lamb had to quickly turn around to receive the pass. Smith to play it back. Another replacement. That's Mark Brokenshear on the field. Gillies. Just short of halfway. That's better running by the Canterbury forwards. Good game, Jason Smith. Good prospect. Polamata. Martin Bella. Maybe one of the changes in the Canterbury side in this half has been the absence of Jim Dimmick with Gillies on. The thrust and direction hasn't quite been there. Brett Mullins drops it. He's taken it on the full in the in goal area if he had have held onto it. And it would have been a 22 tap. That's a terrible error. It wasn't really that difficult to take, even though it did come over his shoulder. Yeah, pretty simple put down there by Brett Mullins. And that really is the sort of error that a game can swing on. Canberra leading by four points. Steve Folks on the bench, helping with the training for Canterbury this year. Darren Smith. Almost out of the tackle. He nearly backed out of the tackle of Daly and Boyle. Now Brokenshear. Good yards by Brokenshear. McGrady. Lamb was a decoy. McCracken puts it down. Really should have taken that pass, Jared McCracken. He thinks that it went back, but fair enough decision by referee Harrigan. He simply should have caught the pass, would have made it uh, that much easier. Yeah, just a lapse in concentration. The wide ball thrown out by Ewan McGrady. And that ball definitely knocked on by McCracken. It was a little high, but he had plenty of time to get it in his sights. It was a floater. You really got to ask yourself, was it necessary? There's a guy next to him who could have passed it. I think he decided to use Terry Lamb as the decoy for once instead of giving it to him, John. Probably that's a disappointing part about Canterbury's game. They are trying to beat them on the outside, but they seem to be making a lot of yards up the middle. We're using blokes like Bella and Brokenshire. But we, normally we see Walters skating out the dummy half of the great break. And he steams up the middle, Steve Walters. 25 metres he gained. Untouched before they got to him on the 30 metre line. Now it's Daly. Meninga. Quick hands intended for Beltra. Darren Smith picks it up. 50 metres in front. The referee's going to call them back. And all the Canberra players helping Bill Harrigan make that decision. But that ball was knocked down by one of the Canterbury players getting in between the pass. But that had try written all over it. Had it found the receiver. A quick pass from Meninga intended for Daly. There's the ball knocked down by Smith. Did Smith get a hand on it? Or did he just bump it? Oh, oh, I couldn't tell. No, it looked like he definitely got a hand on it. So Boyle works it to Belcher. McCracken comes in. Up and in defence that time from Jared McCracken. Meninga takes them on. They are equal to the challenge. Steve Stone, 30 metres out. Stewart, switching to Belcher. Bad pass, held them up. Meninga, Osman. Almost to Shepard. 28 metres out. A couple of tackles remaining yet. Pongia. Good ball. Meninga, Belcher on to Hoppy. Bella comes across. Hoppy beats him, but he took enough pace off him to put him on the deck. Ten metres out now. Fifth tackle. Very stretched. They could run this football. The width of the crook. <laughs> Kick hooked into the corner and it's a try. Ricky Stewart hooking the little kick back. Referee checks with the in goal judge. Will award the try. Yeah, to Gary Belcher. Planned move as they quickly went to the open side. And off his left boot, Ricky Stewart placed it beautifully. And through comes Gary Belcher. And the elation on the face of Ricky Stewart. Yeah, tremendous kick here. You see Belcher coming through down the outside. I believe he is onside, won the race easily. But that was after a fine break down the right-hand flank. 
Moppy it was who went down and got them within range. And then quick thinking by Ricky Stewart, setting it up on the blind side. The Canterbury in trouble now, down 18 points to 10, kick to come for Ferner. Gary Belcher had played 126 first grade games at the end of last year, but of course only played one game for Canberra in first grade last season with a wretched injury which just would not go away. Mal Meninga has taken over the kicking. David Ferner having left the field just a few minutes ago. And Meninga, like Terry Lamb, has only had a couple of shots of goal, kicked one of them for a 50% rating. But it's only inches in from touch. This could ruin his average. Hits it pretty well. It's a good-looking kick. Off the upright and bounces out. And what an important kick that was. Mind you, Canberra do have the eight-point eight, eight point advantage here. 17 minutes to go. There's, there's some quick hands down the edge. Provided this for Ricky Stewart. A good tip by Belcher. He knew it was coming. Good communication between these very experienced pair. There's a chip off the left foot. Now, that's accuracy for you. We're just just over the top of Martin no. Bella's head. I'm sorry, Arthur. I was just wondering whether Stone was offside. Well, in the end, he didn't touch the ball anyway, did he? Well, he's inside the 10 metre area. That's not a save. Yeah, that happens every weekend, Arthur. McGrady gets it underway once more. So Canterbury now with the task ahead of them. 17 minutes to go. Plenty of time. And if they can take a leaf out of St George's book, Canterbury should just play it steadily. They don't have to do anything silly here. They showed in the first half that they could gain the upper hand coming from behind. The replacement the Canterbury side, Jason Williams is off. McCracken looks like he's on the wing. And Andrew Patmore had a good game in the second grade. Number 17, the replacement. Penalty goes to the Raiders. Simon Gillies in there, getting tangled up. Bill Harrigan getting it right this time, but uh, normally some referees will give the penalty the other way. As we see, trying to get up to play the ball stone, and there he is, Smith in the road there, just not getting out of the road and getting out of the ruck area. Mel Meningo might be captain, but Ricky Stewart is doing a lot of the organising out there. Here's Fritz. He's from the old school, Ricky Stewart. Very similar, Billy Smith and Conrad Donegas. He doesn't mind barking at the forwards. He's a talker. Osborne striving to gain those hard yards and he stumbles up to the halfway. Walters. Jim Walters have been in outstanding form, John. Yeah, very dangerous. He'll be a thorn in the New South Wales side. And you've got his brother probably possibly on the bench and he can come on the last ten of each half. Carve you up again. Stewart changes direction. Daly, they've got numbers. Meninga decides to kick. Chasing through quickly as Boyle. McGrady hasn't got too much time. And Boyle's there. Could pull him into touch. He has. A oh, big tackle by David Boyle. Ewan McGrady just took too much time. He was hoping it would go over the touchline. It didn't. And he suddenly got into all sorts of strife. He's had an outstanding game, David Boyle. He scored a try and uh, he's backed it up by some outstanding defence. And there's the little grubber in behind the line by Mel Meninga. It looks pretty innocuous, really, but a good chase by Boyle. And Ewan McGrady really took his time to get to that football. And, gee, I think the forwards would be really cursing Ewan McGrady. Daly now off the scrum win. Canberra can seal it here if they can score another try. It'll be very difficult for the Bulldogs to come back. Stewart looks one way, goes to Meninga. Keeping it in tight on the first couple. Peppering away here. Now they spread. Out wide, Belcher. Goes himself. He's cut him down. Underneath with broken shear. Nine metres out. Walters. Stone it is, in fact. Goes the blind side. Only a couple of metres out. Stewart. Another looping pass to Daly. Meninga. Touch on the speed. Hoppy now. McCracken trying to get hold of him. Meninga, no one in front of him. The twinkle-toed Mel Meninga scores in the right-hand corner. Two tries in very quick time. And Canterbury gets slowly off the deck. They know that they're in real trouble now. Mel Meninga stayed on his feet. Got out of the tackle of Jared McCracken. 
Some good work here by Laurie Daly. Feeds the pass on. Meninga did well. So too did Hoppy. There's the tackle that wasn't really effective enough. But Kraken and Lamb couldn't get Meninga as they covered across. Yeah, they worked it one way. They were turned with a couple of wide balls. Once you get a wide ball, they stood. An equally wide ball. But I thought Mal really had Paul about a beat and uh, almost watched it. But Kraken gets hold of Hoppy. Mal backs up. Easy five. Mal should have scored it. One ruck earlier, or one play earlier. Fine pass by Hoppy to finish it all off. You Not the first time we've seen that. A long pass from Ricky Stewart. Give them some space. Meninga yeah. getting free. He had the polymer out of beaten, you're right, but he wasn't to know. He passed in the one motion as he was missed. And Meninga ran the last couple of paces. So the green machine as the anthem goes up here. Mal Meninga, 250 points in test football, a world record. And he's got the ball placed where he hit the upright just a moment ago from where he hit the upright. This is probably easier. I think it's about two inches further in from the touchline. Same mound. The Canberra now leading 22 points to 10. That's two converted tries they have up their sleeve. This would certainly be the nail in the coffin if Meninga can land it. Pushes it out to the right, coming back a little. Not quite enough. He's been either side only by a couple of centimetres. Canberra 22, Canterbury 10. Well, there's the trademark. Rick Stewart, the long ball. Daly does well. Pollen Mounter went in, the number seven for Canterbury, and couldn't adjust to come out again. And Mal had him beaten pointlessly. Didn't have to pass, but in the end, he was good enough to back up. Ordinary tackle by McCracken, and uh, Mal Meninga scores another try. Back to halfway, it's Luke Goodwin, who has returned to the field at some stage of this game. Belcher, fullback kicking to fullback, and Gary Belcher makes an uncharacteristic error. And Polo Mounter is on for Luke. Uh, Luke Goodwin is on for Polo Mounter. And Jason Deeds on for the Canberra side at hooker. Gary Belcher will have nightmares about that tonight. And especially if Canterbury score get back into this match. McGrady. Up in that halfback slot. Goodwin feeds it on to Smith. They keep it alive to Gillies backing up. Or is it Pat Moore? With the last pass, the tackle's made by Meninga. That was a tough one. Luke Goodwin smothered. Now Pat Moore. He's only a metre out. The far winger for Canberra close to the post as they go themselves, the Bulldogs, in close. Hanging over the line, dragged back as Sedaris. McGrady kicks... Well, he intended to kick for Dallas. He got it there. Dallas might still score. Flicks it up for Gillies. Lamb trying to back up. Here's a penalty. Gets the penalty. They're stripping the football. It's, well, that was a tremendous kick across field. And there's a man in the sin bin here as well. Quick tap is to be taken, or they wanted to take a Canterbury centre. Wanted to try there and then. Got David Boyle, Warren. It's called a great game by David Boyle. He obviously spoke back to the referee well, I think it might have did he, was he the one who stripped he the ball he was the one that stripped the ball Lamb, McGrady, Bella and once again ruling that the Canberra players has stripped the football Marty plays on Luke Goodwin throws it out to Dallas it's a bad pass over the touchline he tried to keep it in play and the flag is in the air from the touch judge and gee, that had try written all over it. All it had to do was find Brett Dallas. They wouldn't have caught him. Here's Goodwin. Had the right idea. The wide pass to Dallas, who was unmarked. Out and on did the he get the feet. kick away? Oh, well, the, our replay just cut out in time. But Dallas trying to get that kick away before he went in to touch it. It must have been very close. The touch judge flag was in the air. Here's another look. Does he kick it before he goes over the... Oh, no. Just... No, he won't get a job in the chorus line. <laughs> Two very near things for Canberra as first McGrady kicked to Dallas and then Goodwin threw the long ball out to Dallas. And there's, there's a, a back and stick and back play. Darren Smith is in it for Canterbury. The Mounties come from everywhere. And Pongia. No, it's not Pongia. As Darren Smith was the first one in for Canterbury. They were throwing them hammer and tongs and uh, Darren Smith wasn't mucking around either. Sedaris and Osborne having a bit of a wrestle off the ball. Touch judges in. 
Osborne with strips of bandage already hanging from his head. This will be interesting because uh, Canberra had possession. They don't want to concede a penalty while in possession. This close to the line. Canberra the leading 22 to 10 and 13 minutes to go. So a referee taking his time here. There was certain, certainly a flurry of left and right hooks. Jason Croker could have been the man involved. This is the end of that uh, here he comes now. practice, but really it was the play the ball area. Something must have happened after the play the ball because it uh, was Smith on Pong. Have a look here. I think on the right hand side of the picture, there's Croker. Croker just made contact with Smith at that point, and oh, there yeah. they are into it. it. Looks like Jason Smith in there trying to break it up. Well, it looked like oh, either we're going to bruise each other. The referee's certainly taking his time. Yeah, it looks as though that uh, maybe Croker was at fault there because he's charged forward in the play the ball, if you look at that. But the referee definitely ruling that Smith was in the wrong. And Sidaris must have been spoken to for coming in. So the pressure relieved on Canberra. They can settle down. They've got the ball for six tackles. The penalties are six apiece. And there goes Paul Osborne with his 15th hit up. He's worked pretty solidly. We're in the middle all day long, Osborne, the former St George player. Got a sting in the defence as it comes in in this tackle. It was Smith coming in on Pongia. Now Croker. He's buried. Gillies comes over the top. Daly. Jason Smith living around in back play, so it wouldn't surprise me to see him being replaced. And there's a replacement on for Canberra. That's Jason Deeth, I think. Ricky Stewart drives it down. Well, Good one on his fingertips. Plenty of confidence. He's now close to the touchline. Mullins luckily didn't drag him any further. The tackle was completed. Dallas. Brokenshire. Flicks it out the back. Looks like it may have just gone a touch forward. The referee thought it was all right. Lamb. Cuts across field. Gillies. And you can hear the, the talk between the Canberra players saying he's yours, Box, the nickname for Steve Walters. Now Darren Centre. McGrady. Hunting for McCracken. Euro McGrady, it's just not working for him. In fact, was it down here that... Certainly yeah. in a televised match we saw last year where Ewan McGrady had a very disappointing match at the end of the year and then yeah. left from the Very field. ordinary pass. He gave the cracker no chance at all. He had to put the grubber in or the kick in behind the line. He had the winger up. It's a shame to see a marvellous player like McGrady just out of form and in reserve grade when he is clearly a first-grade standard player. But fullback's not his spot. He is playing at halfback at the moment, admittedly. We see... Jason Smith came coming coming off and uh, Jimmy Dimmock back in the side. And the box head Steve Walters makes more ground this time. 30 metres out. Always going forward to Steve Walters. Ricky Stewart for a long range field goal. Beautifully struck. All his rugby union days come flooding back from 30 metres out and not right in front either. Straight between the posts. The game is won and lost now. Canberra 23, Canterbury 10. That's enough to win this game. Have a look at this. He just strikes it beautifully. That means that they have to score more than two tries, three conversions, to win this game. So that seals the fate for Canterbury. Lamb races up to halfway to try and pull something out of the fire here. And <laughs> Daly consummately one-handed. Well, that ball was going out the dead ball line. It had to hit the upright. Slow up for Laurie Daly. Nine minutes to go. I think that Pongia has a, had a very good game also, but... The guy that's in the Sinbins certainly had a great game, John David Boyle. Yes, he did play well, Arthur. He's uh, been off the scene for a while, but he'll uh, relish playing with Mal Meninga. But at half time, I thought that Canterbury might have had uh, Canberra's measure. But the second half's been dominated by the Canberra side. Good possession, they've used it very well. And of course, Ricky Stewart's kicking has been marvellous. 
Laurie Daly gets a well-earned rest. Another great burst up the middle by Steve Walters. He's cutting loose now, Walters. Kept on the tail. It'll be called back for a knock-on. No advantage yeah. there. You should have locked that ball up. Uh, but this is Laurie Daly Laurie going. Laurie Daly, have a good rest. Save yourself for the state of origin now. <laughs> Arthur's boys are waiting for you. They'll still get you. <laughs> a well-earned rest indeed for Laurie Daly. Very hard to play. 160-odd minutes of football in just 18 hours. Hard enough to back up three days after a game. That also indicates Tim Sheens knows that his team has got this two points and a very valuable two points for the Raiders. At the Origin Games followed by test matches. Their star players should be away for quite some time or tired from playing in the same week. So at full strength, they need to rack up these wins. This will make it four out of seven. They've done a pretty fair job too, uh, Camber. They've... Here's Dimmock back into the fray. Goodwin. Darren Smith. He's got Dallas with him. Darren Smith goes ahead. Good tackle by Belcher. Mullins helps out and Mullins gets the ball. Smith knew he was going over the touchline. Tried to get rid of it. Well, they've had a man short, Camber. They've had a man in the sin bin for 10 minutes, but uh, they've done a very good job defensively to contain this Canterbury outfit. Canberra have had a little more ball in this second half, admittedly. Total errors, Canberra 24, Canterbury 41. 27 missed tackles by Canterbury, particularly in the last 10 minutes. Two quick tries to Canberra in this half, really sealing the victory. And the last tackle, it's Stewart kicking right back across field, and he's gone so far, it's out on the full. John, I just wonder whether Chris Anderson could have his time over, whether he would have rested Jim Dimmick. I know Dimmick played last night, but he was playing so well in the first half. Yes, I think Chris Anderson would be very disappointed uh, with their second half display. I think at half time they looked like, uh, you know, after conceding that early, those early points to Canberra, I thought they came back very well and I thought they might go on with this because the wind was probably turning around, although it's dropped now, and I thought everything was in place for Canterbury to go on with it. But, uh, it's been a great effort by Canberra. And they just... Here's Dimmick offloads to Gillies. Gillies for the line. Belcher with a try saving tackle. Been a great game, Belcher. Three metres out. Sadara swings it to McGrady. Wrapping around Lamb. Men outside picked the wrong one. Patmore couldn't hold on to the pass, but I think the pass was really intended for Luke Goodwin. And Patmore had a go at it. The passage just not quite there as McGrady was trying to throw the longer, wider pass. Patmore thought it may have been intended for him. John, no, uh, Canberra do go well when their halves uh, cut loose, but today I think the Canberra halves have more than matched Hollamounter and Lamb. Well, oh, most certainly. Well, Ricky Stewart and, and Laurie Daly, I mean, they're a formidable pair. They're a thorn in anyone's side. Those long passes, and uh, Laurie can see good awareness, see daylight out wide, picking up players like Boyle and Meninga. As long as your forwards are going all right, which they have today, you know, Canberra's going to be well and truly in the hunt this year. And David Boyle comes back onto the field. Canberra have survived the 10-minute period without him pretty well. Osborne. Meninga. Boyle. Steve Wallace has had a tremendous game today. Yeah, he's been outstanding also, John. And might Even... be a little reminder too, Arthur, they've put Jason Deeth on his hook and just dropped him back into a second now. He can play anywhere. But Ozzy Osborne has had a good game also. Goodwin with a wonky old pass across to Dallas. Makes life difficult for him. Luke Goodwin's pass is not quite finding their mark since he's come back onto the field. May not have good balance. Certainly took a nasty leg injury in the first half. Gary Belcher has come from the field. Brett Mullins has dropped back to fullback. The deep back line set. Lamb. McGrady wraps around. But there's no way through. The defence moving up quickly. There's a good defensive line from Canberra. They're certainly not you know, starting to relax on their defensive line. Fifth tackle on the halfway. Lamb. Kicks deep. Cross goes Mullins, and Mullins has nothing to do with it. A good kick by Terry Lamb, but the kicking game of Canterbury 
has been bettered by the kicking game of Ricky Stewart in this game. And Luke Goodwin and Terry Lamb, you just have the feeling they're saying, well, it's just not quite working today. The understanding hasn't quite been there. Yeah, some of their passes have gone astray. They've had a few opportunities, especially down that right flank to Dallas. He's been open a couple of times, but unfortunately the passes haven't found their mark. Three minutes to go. 23 points to 10 in favour of Canberra. They've scored five tries to two. And surprisingly, just one goal apiece. Scrum penalty goes against Canterbury. They're up inside the five metres. And Terry Lamb, I think, was the culprit from the scrum base. And Canberra not in any hurry to get on with this game. They've got enough points on the board. Just ride home there. Contented just to sit on that 13-point margin. Canberra back on the rails in this match after last week's loss to Parramatta. It must have been a bitter loss for Tim Sheens. He was very angry with his team. John, John mentioned last week he didn't speak to them at half-time. He was furious with their first half performance. He was angry afterwards. And the fact that Brett Mullins was dropped for turning up late on Sunday indicates that he called a Sunday training session. Here's Ferner tearing up the middle. Oh, that was an awful pass. Croker got back to pick up. And still going is Jason Croker. He's proving himself to be a very valuable player. He is an everywhere man. Man down and back play. Croker, who played on the wing in the rep game last night. Is it Gillies down and back play? Yes, Simon Gillies. Simon Gillies. And writhing in a bit of pain. Canterbury, a team that have got through most of this season so far without any real injury problems until losing Geordie Peets recently and Ferner with a rip-roaring run and there is Gillies just falling off him and getting the injury there he should have given that uh, pass to Jason Death on the outside Deep on the outside there and clicking to go for the, the wide pass out to Croker there it is again. here's Deep coming up in support and in the back play there left behind trampled was Simon Gillies he doesn't look too good, Simon Gillies. Looks like he'll be, have some ice on that leg tonight. Either the knee or the ankle by the look of it. So the, the pace of the game slowing with injuries and interchanges. It's a long walk across field. And referee Harrigan is waiting until Gillies gets close to that touchline. And the message for everyone right around Australia, lest we forget our Anzac Day veterans. John, are you marching? I won't be marching, but I'll tell you where I will be marching as they put a kick through here, the Canberra side. Brett Mullins is right after it, and he gets there first. Well, the Bulldogs put, <laughs> put their heads in the air, looking the other direction, and Brett Mullins wins the race to the ball, and Canberra starting to build an embarrassing scoreline now as Ricky Stewart puts the kick downfield. No one at home. And Brett Mullins is a speedster and outpaces the very quick Brett Dallas and Luke Goodwin. Ricky Stewart, he should be on sale of the centuries. That's far. We beautiful kick put through there. Brett Mullins beat. Brett Dallas, more pace. Wins the race. Chips ahead. Money in the bank. The third try of the year to Brett Mullins. Great thinking. They had plenty of time to have a chat about it and to set it up. I suppose at this stage of the game, they're feeling fairly adventurous. And the score mounts. Canterbury will lose their second game in a row. They won five straight. They're going to topple to their second defeat. Down by 17 points. And it could be a little more. David Ferner's back on the field. Mal Meninga had two shots, both of them shaved the posts. Ferner has a difficult one from the other side of the field. This should suit him, round the corner style, with the right foot. Gets it up in the air, but that's not going to have the legs. So Canberra in charge in all departments now, leading 27 to 10. Here's another instance where Ricky Stewart just summing things up. Mullins came from an onside position, and he's got the pace to get there. 
Good stuff by the Raiders. And Cole Rasmussen, a benefit day for Cole Rasmussen on the 7th of May at St George Lee Club, the former great St George hooker. Doing a bit tough at the moment. Yeah, let's hope all the, the friends and teammates of Cole Rasmussen can get along to that. Here's Jason Deep with a great run. And also Chris O'Sullivan from the Raiders, one of the original Raiders from 1982, is selling his testimonial book. I can sure you can get a copy through the Canberra Club. Last stages of this match, but maybe still four points as Ricky Stewart hoists it high. Luke Goodwin's got it. What's he going to do with it? Take the tackle? I think he said that's enough. I can't be bothered running anyway. And a comprehensive second half performance from the Raiders. It was 10 all at half time, but a very strong second half from the Canberra side. And there's no doubt who was the winner here today. Maybe the tiring of players, the effect of last night did have an influence. A very good performance and they've run out winners by 27 points to 10. The scorers, Ferner, Hoppy, Boyle, Belcher, Meninga and Mullen, six tries in all. Ferner kicking one from four. And for Canterbury, McCracken and Polamata scored the tries. Lamb kicking one from three. Very good victory for Canberra. Ricky Stewart adding that field goal and what a smart field goal it was at that part of the game. Beeson's best. Well, Paul Osborne played an outstanding game. A front rower had 19 hit-ups, done 23 tackles, and provided the backs with a platform, provided them with the momentum that they needed. An outstanding effort by Paul Osborne, just shading Steve Wallace. And probably David Boyle in there as well. Let's go David down to Johnny Peart. Well, Tim, a much-needed win. I'll say. Um, no, it's funny, you play like that. Last week we put in... Um, uh, what it was a fairly ordinary performance and um you know, put ourselves under a lot of pressure today but they've come out and played really well well what about the first half you got away to a good start and uh canterbury came back and i must admit i thought that they might have gone off of it canterbury but good second half effort yeah we lost uh, we lost some possession there towards the end of the uh first half and um really we defended and they and they played well they unloaded a lot of ball in the out the back and uh in the second phase play was very strong and we just didn't seem to be able to handle that. But we were, and we were tiring, I think, a little. So uh, you know, we got them at half time and we came back out and started well. And I think whoever was going to start well was going was to go on with it, I think. Both sides were tired. Well, thanks, Tim. Watch out for your next opponent. <laughs> it's at <laughs> home anyway, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Sheens with uh, Johnny Peard, the very well-respected, much-respected Tim Sheens. And he is a quiet achiever, isn't he? A uh, very good coach. I've uh, been an outstanding coach and really did his homework this uh, year after a disappointing year last year. He's gone out and he's recruited from everywhere. Fiji, <laughs> New Zealand, Samoa, New Zealand <laughs> everywhere. Well, really, Ponga and Lomax are the two big signings this year for, uh, for the Raiders. Yes, you're not only that, but they've got some outstanding kids in their lower grades and they're going to be a, a side to worry about for years to come. Well, we've got two more of the uh, front row from the Raiders with Johnny Peard. Well, Steve, a sensational game from your own part. Uh, what about the team effort? Are you pleased with it? Oh, it's good to have a win, mate. Um, I don't know about sensational from my part. I probably finished off OK, but I was certainly pretty patchy there. And just good to have a win these days. You know, they're few and far between for us. Yeah, well, what about the first half? Got away well? Yeah, we've had good starts the last three weeks, you know, and uh, we played really well. You know, really good discipline. Defence was good in the first 20 minutes, and we went in at half-time 10 all still, you know. They came back in the second half, but... We, we didn't get much ball there for a while. That's what got us in trouble. Yeah, they had a bit of ball. Just have a word with Ozzy here. Played a good game. Ozzy, uh, like last week, you've moved the ball around a lot. Today, you seem to go forward a lot more. Was that a plan? Yeah, well, last week, sort of, the way I played, <laughs> I was pretty embarrassed with and uh, had a word with Tim during the week. And, and the main thing I wanted to concentrate on was uh, was going forward and uh, let, the, let the Magnificent Seven do what they, they're great <laughs> at. <laughs> well. yeah. Okay, thanks, fellas. Congratulations on the great win. Thanks, mate. Paul Osborne and Steve Walters of the Magnificent Seven, that brilliant green machine backline. Oh, they're certainly an outstanding. We felt their wrath two weeks ago, and it's, I'm glad to see someone else is on the receiving end. I think we've just got time to have a look at the uh, final try for the Raiders. John, are you marching? I won't be marching, but I'll tell you where I will be marching as they put a kick through here, the Canberra side. Brett Mullins is right after it, and he gets there first. Very hungry, the Raiders, and a touch of contempt about that last very smart move. Let's have a look at the rest of the round. We're just about out of time. West taking on Manly. 
Balmain versus Parramatta. St George take on Brisbane. The replay of last year's grand final. It should be a tremendous match. North versus South. Newcastle versus Illawarra. East taking on the Gold Coast. Penrith versus Cronulla. All of the home teams on your left and some very telling contests tomorrow. Should be some great games of football there. Yeah, once again, we'll have a, a great round of competition and hopefully for Cronulla, we'll win two in a row. <laughs> All right, good luck tomorrow. Thank you. And uh, next week, of course, it is a split round with the State of Origin on Monday week. We've got the match between South. The Winfield Cup comes back to Adelaide, City of Churches for the third time. In the game today, St George is featured in their match against the Canberra Raiders. It's a top of the table battle and it'll be played before a big crowd of over 20,000 here at the beautiful Adelaide Oval. Greg McCallum in charge with St George running right to left.